Hi, I'm Candace Gordain, and this is Fitness and Harmonies, Pilates and a little bit of yoga for a strong, healthy back. We've been talking about what supports you and why you come to the exercise, and it's to feel better. It's to carry yourself. So right now, fix your posture. Right now, fix your posture. So when I kind of say, let's go, this is our cue to level the shoulders, to lift the crown of the head, and I want to start out with the navel. So that's usually something people can find, is their navel. <laughs> so find your navel, what do we call it? You know, your um umbilical cord. So there's the navel, and then there's the pubic bone. Okay, so you can find those two places. Most of us know where those things are. And then on either side, I'll move my microphone, is the, the little protrusion of the two hip bones. That's the front of those, the bowl that's holding, well, it's your pelvis. So find those two hip bones, kind of dig your fingers in. It may take, you know, moving some stuff around. So there's the navel, there's the pubic bone. So we're making like a wide diamond shape. Now, almost in the very center of that wide diamond shape, so halfway between the pubic bone and the navel, and about halfway between the two hip bones, is it's just the center. And I want to just give that a name. There's nothing there that you can feel and say, oh yeah, I'm sure I'm right there. So I just want you to measure that out, maybe two inches in. So it's about a two inch wide swath of muscle there. But beneath the rectus abdominis, which is the muscle you can feel if you were to dig in, beneath that is a transversus abdominis, which really goes mostly around the entire waist, that front, almost that same diamond that we just mapped out. But towards the center, I want to give that place a name. So above that is the epigastric. That means above, you know, your gastric, you know, your digestive area. And then below the umbilical would be the hypo, which means below gastric. But I'm going to call this the pelvic pubic abdominal region, the pelvic pubic abdominal region, because this is where we need strength if we're going to lift things. Well, the very first important thing we have to lift is ourselves. So scoop that in, pull that little area in, see if you can feel deeply. We also say these are the hard to reach abdominal area. It's hard to reach because it's buried beneath muscle. <laughs> And it's a kind of below our umbilicus, so we're not necessarily paying attention. So I'm squeezing and releasing, squeezing and releasing. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of pump that out. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. That lower area below the umbilical, but above the pubic bone. Again, I'm going to call this the pelvic pubic <laughs> transverse abdominis region. Now hold it in, hold it in. Imagine you're taking these two hip bones and pulling them in towards each other. Of course, they're not going to move. <laughs> they're not going to move because the abdominal muscles don't hold necessarily there. They hold more of the, the spine, really. Hold that there. Now correct your posture again. So during that time, you may have hunched over. Now practice rolling the shoulder. So holding that pelvic pubic lower transverse abdominus muscle in, roll the shoulders around. We've been working on the throat in yoga. So make a couple of breaths that vibrate energy in the throat. Hold that pelvic pubic abdominal area in. If you do nothing else, but focus on that, that one thing, you will be a strong, have stronger, healthier abdominals will support your back when you're lifting things. The most important thing that you lift every day is yourself. But then I know you, you're lifting other things. You're going outside, you're lifting things in your home. Squeeze and hold the abdominals. Turn the arms out, walk the hands down to the you know, sides of the floor, and then walk one arm out and come back. Walk the other arm out and come back. So practice now finding the oblique muscles. Those are the side waist muscles that control when you're twisting, turning, and falling side to side. Walk out, squeeze this other side as you walk back. So walk out and kind of like you're scrubbing the floor. You're crawling out and then scrubbing the floor. Now I want to pay attention to that pelvic pubic umbilical area. That's where the transverse, that means it goes across. Muscle pulls in two more times. We're going to do some things that are really going to challenge you today. Come up. Good. Now inhale and circle the arms up. Exhale, extend back, rolling the shoulder blades onto the back. Inhale, come up. Turn to one side, let the arms down. Push down with your arms and lift the spine up. So notice whether your head has a tendency to fall off to the side. Mine almost always does, it's like a, a natural progression. So the halo of the head, 
goes right over the center of the spine. So you know that ring toss game, you know, where the ring has to go over like that bottle? Make sure the ring on the top of your head is right over the top of the spine, even if it feels like you're having to pull your head a little bit back. Another breath in, find that pelvic umbilical region, pull it in and come back to center. Let's do that again. Inhale, circle up. Exhale, extend up and back. So we're spinning the shoulders onto the back, lifting the lower belly inward, upward. Inhale, come up, turn in the other direction, let the arms down. When the hands land, doesn't matter where they land, push down and correct your spine. If you were to lift something that wasn't you, right? So there's something else. I have these dumbbells in front of me here. If you're going to lift something else, you know, an object, the goal is to bring it in as close to your ribs as possible, even towards your chest as possible. So pulling in, and then that should remind you, when you touch your body with that object, that should remind you to pull in that pelvic, pubic, umbilical, lower abdomen area, and that gives you the strength and support. Inhale, and exhale. Let's come around to hands and knees. When you get there, Turn your toes under and spread your fingers out. Inhale. As you exhale, pull that pelvic, pubic, lower abdominal area in and up. But don't move your back. Don't move the rim of your pelvis. I always feel like I start out these practices so slow. When I go into editing later, I think, wow, how long did I go on and on about that thing? It's important. It's important to stay with me for these first five or ten minutes where I'm describing our focus. Our focus is a strong, healthy back so that you can carry yourself and other things better. One more time, when you exhale, remember we're pulling that pelvic, pubic, abdominal transverse, lower belly, inward, upward, then with the toes tucked under and pressing into the fingertips, lift the knees up. Now lean a little bit further back so more of your body weight is on your toes. I want to talk about the levels. I said that I'm trying to challenge you. Let's bring the knees down, walk the hands a foot forward, then push the hips back. Now this should make the arms, you know, essentially go up overhead. So be really careful. This is a good time to notice the level that you're working. Many times as a way for instructors, fitness professionals to give you an idea of how hard you should be working we've come up with this idea of levels but in reality there's no such thing as levels right <laughs> you just are who you are so first things first support yourself positively you're doing the best you can and that's great just being here is enough so I said if you're noticing the muscles those deep abdominal muscles and how they're supporting your back and how they're supporting you have your mind also support your back and support you. So you say things like, you're doing great. You're doing the best that you can. And you're not putting yourself in this gasping, grasping, tense and tight movement pattern. As you exhale, move back up into hands and knees. Let's extend one leg straight back. That's it. I just want you to hold that. I want you to practice that lower pelvic pubic hypogastric, that means below your stomach area, pulling that in, hypo is below, hyper is above. So exhale and scoop the lower belly. When we're moving the diaphragm muscle, that's the muscle that moves the lungs or the rib cage out and in or pulls the lungs down to create the vacuum to suck in air. As that diaphragm is moving, it should be going all the way down towards the pelvic floor. When you exhale, the pelvic floor itself should rise up. So find those pelvic floor muscles and squeeze them in and up. Every exhale, support yourself more. Our goal today really is to maintain or to create length in the spine. We're going to do some standing. We're going to use some dumbbells two more times. Lower abdominals, pulling in, pulling up, and then bring that leg down. Try the other leg. So extend one leg back. Try to make that leg straight. Try to make both hips level, so no twisting open. 
Inhale, exhale, begin to notice how the shoulder blades are spun open and back and down. I want you to guide and support yourself. So I've been holding this, I'm gonna hold this about another minute. <laughs> During that time, you're going to think, hmm, how long? <laughs> Let me check my watch. Don't do that. Tell yourself, I'm here to support me, that I adopt a strategy of kindness and support for myself. So you have to keep choosing the options. So one of those options could be come down, just breathe, maintain length in the spine. Just notice that lower pelvic, pubic, <laughs> Gas, gastro area, that lower belly area. Are you leaning? <laughs> I'm leaning. So unlean, that is almost lean the opposite way of where you are thinking you should lean. Another breath. And then bring that knee down. Stretch back into child's pose. Let's give this three slow breath to steady the mind so your mind goes it comes and it goes right and it has a lot to say inhale exhale steady the mind relax the shoulders and do let your head fall down one more breath exhale let's come back up to hands and knees spread the fingers out so every time you touch you know, the mat, this is an opportunity for your, your hands. We have a lot of nerve endings in the hands for the hands to really connect like a suction cup onto the earth. Lift one foot. You see that I have one foot like lifted up towards my glutes there. I'm going to look in the opposite direction. So I'm going to turn my body and look towards the hip with the leg is down. But that same foot is going to twist over behind the other leg so that I can see it behind me. There it is. Hello. And then twist your upper body the other way. So you're going to look to that same side hip and your foot's going to come out to the side. So you're going to keep looking at your foot. So it twists out and you look that way and then it twists across and you turn and look that away. You got it? So you're putting all your body weight really on the other knee, right? So that you can do this. So twist and twist all right what's happening now is your oblique muscles are working super hard at maintaining that flat and long back but i would rather you pay more attention to that you got it pelvic pubic <laughs> hypogastric that lower abdominal area remember those two frontal hip bones are knitting and pulling in towards each other whether you're doing this little movement pattern or not. It's not just your head that's moving, by the way, or opening and closing the side waist. So it's not just the head. The head was a way for me to describe the direction. Two. And one. Let's try the other leg. So first, lift the other leg up. <laughs> you have to shift your body weight. All right, so look. And with the leg, it goes in that same direction as your head. And then twist your leg and look out and see that foot reappear. Exhale. Every time the diaphragm muscle goes down, it creates this wide open space in the lungs. And all the capillaries and all the corpuscles of the blood, they fill up with oxygen. And then they go back to the heart. <laughs> and then the heart pumps all of that oxygen around the entire body. Now when you exhale, part of how that happens is pulling up the pelvic floor, it sort of collides, sort of, with the diaphragm which pushes up into the heart. So that creates that second pump. So you inhale and the lungs fill up and we get oxygen. And then you exhale, pelvic floor rises, diaphragm rises and it pumps the heart out to the extremities two and one ah push back into child's pose give those wrists a couple of swirls and then in the other direction three breaths direct your mind now into steadiness just let the arms and the head fall down Good, so move up into hands and knees. Remember, splay the fingers out, pull the shoulder blade on the back, turn the toes under, lift up and 
into downward dog. Okay, wherever your downward dog is, right? Sometimes it's dog. Accept where you are now. Be your own best friend coach, your own wellness health counselor. The most important thing we do is show up. For today's practice, lengthen the spine. So kind of walk your hips left, right, backward. Oh, wait, remember we just did that side to side thing where we were looking at the foot from side to side. So the lesson from that was to open one sideways, then open the other sideways. So I'm sort of twisting and turning my hips left and right to open up around the edge of the pelvic bowl. Now scoop the lower belly inward, upward, squeeze the pelvic floor muscles and hold two breaths. Exhale. And then I invite you to walk forward. Hang in a really healthy forward fold. I talked about levels. I do want you to go more deeply into the level of sensing. So it's one thing to just do your exercise, you know, to get into the exercise movement pattern and the pose. It's another thing to sense. So that's why I like to hold, to give your mind time. Our minds do work very, very fast, but they don't work as fast as we think they do. <laughs> that actually takes time for the chemistry of the nervous system to get messages from there to here. So three slow breaths, travel with your breath. Two, one more breath. From here, bend your knees. If you have one of those dumbbells, grab the dumbbell before you come up because we're gonna do this. Bend the knees, walk that dumbbell into almost like, you know, into your, into your hands, almost like a bicep curl. Then pull that dumbbell in towards your chest and then lift your chest up. All right, so you may have, maybe you had a super heavy dumbbell and you had to get like really low to grab it. I know you have a, a, a light dumbbell, but practice this, practice this. Something was on the floor and now I have to pull it in. Notice my legs and hips, there's, there's no negotiation. They have to bend, they have to bend. Otherwise, don't pick it up. Don't get somebody else. All right, so pull that in and then like a spring, use your legs. So let's practice moving those legs. So let's start out with the feet. We always say shoulder width apart here. So whatever that means. Remember those frontal hip bones, that's really the proper measurement. So once you have your weight planted in the soles of the feet and all the 10 toes, do that umbilical pubic, those two hip bones, pull that diamond together and then align the halo of the head there. We're gonna put this dumbbell in one hand. I'm gonna purposely pick my left hand today because I always start with my right hand. So pick the hand that you didn't want, you know, do the other one. We're gonna do just a, a simple basic bicep curl. Just do a few of those to get the idea of what a simple basic bicep curl is. Elbow tucked in, shoulder down, body level. Exercise the legs. Give attention to the muscles of the legs. So you know from yoga, right, that we have to keep the legs alive. So now when the weight goes down, bend the knees. Let's see what that looks like. Hips back. When the weight goes up, you stand back up. So the weight's all in the heels now. I can almost lift the fronts of my feet. So weight down, hips down, weight up, hips up. All right, I hope you picked a weight that's pretty easy for you. I don't want you to pick, you know, something that's like 30 pounds here. That's too much because the weight's not in at the chest. You see the difference? So something in the range of like two to eight pounds would be the max here for what we're doing today. I wanna add on, now this is functionally fit. So you don't really do this during the day. You don't really have a reason probably to do this very much. What you're really doing is getting something out of one area and then putting it into another area and you probably do it really quickly. So this time come down. Let's hold this for a breath or two because I wanna reintroduce you to that pelvic pubic 
lower transverse abdominis area. Now come up, but now when you come up, I'm gonna say rack the weight, if you know what this means. You're gonna like turn so that the palm is facing in. Watch that shoulder, push the weight up overhead and pull it down. Now, if you got shoulder issues, don't do this. So we go back to that squat, hold, find the lower abdominals. This is where strength where healthy back comes from. Come up, curl the weight. When Once you come up, rack the weight so it turns it in and then push it up overhead. So now do all of that together. Sit down, lower the weight, squeeze the belly, come up, rack the weight, push the arm up overhead. Okay, so we're not there yet, believe it or not. This is still not a very useful thing, <laughs> right? Things is not like, oh, can you curl this weight for me today? No. So I need to add a little bit more. And that little bit more isn't that much. When you come up and then you push up, twist in the other direction, lift the heel and turn like you're going to put something over there and then pull it back. Yes. And then sit, squeeze the lower belly, come up, push up. Now you may not be pushing up and twist back to center and then back down. Okay. So you can go at your own tempo here. It's not about the repetitions at all. This is about working the muscles around the abdominals. Let's do two more. Lower belly pulling in. That's the most important thing. So I don't even have to do every little piece and part. All right. So when you're ready, squeeze the belly, switch to the other hand. So anytime you switch, bring the weight in close. So again, this is not a heavy weight, but what if it was? Weight in the heels, press the feet down, scoop the belly inward, just a couple of bicep curls for practice. If anything's going on that's causing you pain, please stop. I don't want any pain. There's a couple of phrases in personal training like, get comfortable with discomfort. Here we go. Weight down, hips back. Weight up, hips up, yes. Get comfortable with discomfort. No, I don't like that. I like go with the flow. Find the movement that serves you and guide and support yourself based on your intentions. I want a healthy, strong back. I want to, I want to be tall. <laughs> and I want to be able to do things by myself. I don't like asking for help. <laughs> you may know that about me. Shoulder blades down on the back, lower pelvic pubic, that lower area pulling in. What does this pelvic floor do when you exhale? It rises up. <laughs> All right, so now add that, I um, call it racket. So when you come up, that's where you twist the arm and it kind of like sits there and then back down. When you come down, pause, see if you can hold this. Shoot the hips a little bit back, scoop the lower belly, come back up, rack the weight. This time push up or not, leave that part out. So come down, hips go back, lower umbilical goes back, come up, rack the weight, push up. This time twist, so my back heel when I'm throwing something over there. All right, so you may not do this specific movement in your day-to-day. -day. Inhale, exhale. But chances are you do a variety of pushing and pulling and twisting and lifting. Front to back, side to side, top to bottom. So the more that low belly, that area around the low belly, the low back is supporting you, the better. It's not about the upper abs. No, no, no. We don't have to do the crunches. We don't have to do the crunches. They're really not going to get you very much at all. Despite what the advertisements, some of you know me, how I am about the advertisements. Despite what the advertisements will show you, it's really just about the lower abdominals that are deep inside that you can't see them, how they're supporting your back. Two more times, hips back, belly in, you're doing great. I said I can see you. You're doing fantastic. All right. Let's hold on to that weight in front of the body. 
So we're going to hold on to the ends. Keep it in kind of close. Let's take the legs a little bit wider like a plie, bend the knees a little bit, and then twist right and left. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So you may think this has something to do with the weight. It doesn't really have anything to do with the weight. It has everything to do with squeezing the sideways. So if I could picture my abdominals and quadrants, the top, the bottom, and the two sides, like there's a big X and there's these two, it's right there, right at that crossroads where they meet on the sides. You're squeezing on the right, then you're squeezing on the left. So keep the legs a little bent, squeeze right, squeeze left, squeeze, squeeze. So remember that squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze. Functionally fit for a strong, healthy, long back so that you can carry yourself in other things. No crunching, friends, no crunching. Three, two, and one. All right, we're just going to hold this weight here. All I want you to do is lean a little towards one side, then sit like you're going to balance. Like in yoga, we do this side, you know, thing. We're not doing that, but that's the where you're like leaning towards and then come up. So lean to the other side, sit. It's the sit that you see, it feels really weird to you and come up. So now lean, sit, but let that weight down next to your leg and then come up. Lean the other way, sit down. It's a sit down I know you don't want to do. Reach the arm around and back to center and back up. So lean over, sit down, twist and back to center. Lean over, sit down, twist and back to center. Lean, sit, twist, pull. Hey, what happens when you pull? You know. That lower abdominal pulls in and up. The pelvic floor rises. You're breathing. I can hear you. No, I can't. But I know that you are. All right. For those of you who are like, you know, really want to do more, when you come up, stretch up and over to the other side. So it's sit, lean, reach down, come back to center, and reach up to the other side. Lean, sit, twist over, come up, and reach up over to the other side. Lean, sit, twist, curl, lift, push. Lean, sit. What an instructor I must be. Like, you're all doing this perfectly. I'm going to take credit for that. Is that okay? All right, you can see, like, if you had a bad back and it hurt going in, that this would be really a challenge for you. Now, that's a bad thing, right? Don't do it. But for the rest of us, that teaches us that this is a good exercise to strengthen a bag back so that it's healthy. So that when we do kind of weird and awkward and unusual movement patterns, the lower abs have you. How do you carry yourself? How is your posture? That's actually kind of a bigger deal than anything we're doing here today. Let's do three more. Don't forget to sit. I see some of you not sitting anymore. <laughs> lift. So we're kind of twisting, revolving, and rotating. Last one. Woo. How do we come down from here? Let's come down the way we came up. So I'm going to squat down. That is hips, 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 weight in close, unbicep curl, and put the weight down. Come down to hands and knees again. So you can move. Actually, keep that weight right there. Keep that weight right there. Walk the knees a little bit back. Pause. Brace. Breathe. All right, remember the bracing part? I know you remember. The pubic, pelvic, the two hip bones, that little diamond shape, pull that in. Grab that weight if you want to. If you don't want to, don't do it. We're going to take that weight and put it back by your knee and then put the hand back. Use your other hand, grab that weight, bring it up by that hand and put your hands back down. All right. So hand takes the weight, puts it back by its knee, and then that hand comes back up. The opposite hand threads under, grabs the weight, and drags it back up. And you put that hand down. So take the weight, same hand, step the weight back, 
and put the hand down. Opposite hand grabs the weight and pulls it up and then put that hand down. Keep going, same hand, pull the weight back, back to that plank. Opposite hand, pull the weight up, back to plank. Same hand, pull it down. This is called dumbbell drag. Oh, what a drag it is, right? <laughs> it's like, if you watch somebody doing this, you'd probably think, do they not know what they want to do with that weight? Why do they keep changing their mind? Well, you can see, you can kind of forget about the weight for a moment. And think about all the interactions going on with the shoulder, the latissimus dorsi, the obliques. And of course, you know that guy, transverse abdominis. You know where he lives. That muscle lives right below the navel. Keep shifting. Even if you don't have to, shift your weight left, right. It's a very subtle thing. It's kind of like you're standing on that grocery line and you're waiting and waiting and you keep shifting your weight left and right. Same thing, but you're on your hands. All right, one more round. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> and then push back into child's pose. Let's rest. All right, no question. I've been really challenging you today so let's move more into a breathing exercise inhale ha exhale inhale ha. maybe your heart's really you know beating and you can feel that you can feel the pulsation as oxygen's getting to all of your muscles Keep supporting yourself. Say to yourself, you did a good job. You did. You did a good job. Three. You probably feel your know, neck and shoulders and back and hips. Okay, slowly make your way around into a seated pose. We'll keep those weights in close. If you have the ball, I'm not sure if I told you to grab the ball. If you don't have the ball, grab a block. If you don't have a block, you might have a pillow handy. If you don't have any of that, don't worry about it, right? The, the don't worry about it. That's the one I always like. All right, so you have the ball or the block. Put that between your thighs. Put your hand on the pelvic pubic <laughs> lower that's hypogastric area okay so that's that diamond you remember that put your hands there now when you exhale pull just that area in so not the upper abs so no crunching today it's a crunchless ab series now when you exhale pull that area down but now squeeze the ball or the block or the pillow between the legs and then release all of that. When you exhale again, so the lower belly goes down and the inner thighs squeeze. But wait, there's more. When you exhale, that belly goes down, the inner thighs go in, the pelvic floor muscles go up like an elevator and then release all that. Belly down, inner thigh squeeze, pelvic floor muscles up and release all that belly down inner thigh squeeze pelvic floor muscles empty the lungs inhale let it all go exhale pull it all up together so no more in steps everything is acting together because when you go to pick something up let's say you have you know a hundred pound bag of you know dog food or something to pick up it all has to work together. You can't just wait, you know, and do step by step by step. Squeeze, squeeze. So of those three, you know, kind of the three points that I, I noticed there, which one gives, gets most attention? 
Don't judge that. Just notice it. Two more times. My glutes are kind of doing a lot of work here. And I, I ask myself, why are my glutes <laughs> working really, really hard? Because that's what they do. Now squeeze and hold, squeeze and hold. So pelvic floor, I'm talking to myself here, not glutes, Candace. Pelvic floor, I have to think about that. Lower abs, Candace, not the upper abs so much. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, so now try levitating, lifting up the legs so that the knees, shins parallel, grab those weights. Do you have two dumbbells you can hold on to? We'll do some chest press. So when you push the hands up, squeeze the ball, squeeze the abs. Inhale when you pull the arms down. Exhale, squeeze the ball, squeeze the abs. Inhale as you pull the arms down. Exhale, so pelvic floor, inner thigh squeeze. Actually, everything from the pelvic floor up to the chest is actually squeezing all at the same time. So almost think like you're going to crunch up off the floor, but of course we're not going anywhere. Squeeze, crunch. Keep the arms kind of down. You could always have palms facing in. I don't make a big difference about what this is called grip in the personal training world because I want you to figure that out based on what feels right. Pause at the top. Two more times. Squeeze, pause at the top. Remember that belly, last time, lift up. Squeeze, pause at the top, squeeze the inner thighs. And then release down. You can get rid of the ball and hold just one of those weights. So weight in the center of the body. We're gonna bring the weight in towards the chest, curl the head and chest up. In fact, I'm gonna bring one hand to make sure my head stays really careful here. Turn to the side. Do you remember we did this when we were on hands and knees? The shoulder went towards the hip and back to center. Turn to the other side, shoulder towards hip and back to center twist or a, I don't know what to call this lean to one side and back lean to the other side and back lean and lean lean all right now this is the first time really that we're super activating the upper the hyper that's actually called epi <laughs> gastric area that's above the umbilical these are not really personal training or physiology terms. These are more to do like a doctor. They're more talking about where the organs are. So they say it's the gastric area. Three, two, and one. Come all the way down. Get rid of the weights. Cross one ankle over. Draw the legs in. So wrap your arms around that shin and pull the shin in towards you. All right, I invite you now to close your eyes. Inhale. Exhale. These are going to be very long breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Steady your mind. So I invite you now to let your mind move away from work. We did a lot of work here today. You're really proud of yourself. Move away from the working mind and into the just the sensing being mind. Two more slow breaths. We're not really activating muscles, we're just feeling breathing. Good, then switch legs. Cross the ankle over, grab kind of at the shin and pull. Close your eyes again. Go inside, so where the heart connects to the throat. From a yogic sense, this is a really special Transition between what's in your heart, very poetic, what's in your heart, you know, love and kindness and 
gratitude and generosity and greed and jealousy that are also there, to what's in your throat, which is all about how fast you're moving, rushing around or going slow. But physiologically, the nerves and the organs there have everything to do with those things that I just told you. How you feel about your place in this world, your social space. So as you're breathing in, breathing out. Remember I said to steady the mind with a slow, steady breath. Give your heart, your, your, your metaphoric heart, right? The one that's out there in love and putting yourself in and out of relationships. Give that space. One more breath. Then lengthen the legs out. Reach the arms overhead. Flex the feet back. So pull the toes in towards you. Push the heels away from you. Now in one long breath, I want you to inhale through the soles of your feet and then suck all that energy up into your fingertips. And then like a wave, when you exhale, let the energy from your fingertips flow all the way back down to your feet. So picture like a roller or a wave all the way from your feet up to fingertips. All the way back down to the feet. Keep watching this wave wash through you. So water and sky are blue. And again, in yoga, that has a very special significance in the throat, how we meet the world, how the world meets us, and how we have a relationship with other people and the universe around us. Spread the toes out, get some air. Air is interesting, it's very light. It's got oxygen in it. But when it combines with hydrogen, as you know, it becomes water, it gets very heavy. Draw both knees into your chest. Using your hands on your knees, circle the knees around. All right, so giving some love to the sacral area, the rim of the pelvic bowl on your back. Now go the other way. Those twisting, lifting, overhead, squatting things that we did. They really were a workout for the area that you're massaging right now. Sweep side to side. Pull the knees in. And then move into Shavasana. With the legs and the arms gently. Move a little bit out, but mostly they just spin open. So now begin to slow down. All of the hard work of pulling, pushing, has transformed you. Your body now is your own support system. capable of holding and moving you in any direction you choose to go. Slowly breathe in and let that go. Slowly breathe in and let that go. Gently begin to move to your side. Open your eyes. Good, so pushing up off the floor now. Let's take a little stretch. Come to a seated pose and spin the hands behind you. Push the fingers into the floor and push the chest forward. We've done a lot of squeezing into the center, so I want to make sure there's this openness and the heart is broad and the shoulders feel nice and 
open and relax. Come back up. Give the head a gentle circle around in one direction. And then slowly move the head around in the other direction. Gently bring the head to rest in the perfect alignment. Inhale and reach up. Exhale and scoop all that good intention into the action. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Nice work, everyone.